Hallelujah. Surrender the doorway into freedom. Without surrender, you'll never experience true freedom. Amen. Are you surrendered to him this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. Amen. Everybody stay, stay to your feet. Amen. Raise your hands. Both hands like this. Look at this. You know, when I, when I first got born again, I would see people do this, and I, I didn't know what it meant. I started thinking, well, then I thought about it. I said, that means I give up. I surrender. Lord, you got me. Amen. Somebody say, I'll say I, am I am a son of God. I am a son of God. I'm a believer. I don't doubt anymore. Now shout amen. Hallelujah. Praise him. You can have a seat. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. How many were here Friday night? Boy, that was a powerful word, wasn't it? Good, great service. Amen. Hallelujah. I had Apostle Louis out that night. Amen. I want to recognize good old friend, Zenon Valdez over here. Amen. Hallelujah. We go back to Pastor Louis' church back in the 80s, I think, isn't it? Hallelujah. Good to have you with us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember those days. But you know what? They were Sometimes they were struggling days, but they were exciting days too because it was, we were in the process of changing our lives forever. You understand that? Sometimes you know that things could be, uh, they could look like there are problems going on, and there are, but they're also exciting because those were the days I mean, when our lives were being changed. Amen. And sometimes in the midst of trying to change your life, there's problems, isn't there? But the good news is I look back on it now and I say, well, there are bad times there, but you know what? It was a process we were going through to change us forever. Amen. We were learning to do something. We were learning to surrender. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, take your Bible and go to Psalm 115. You know, we played a lot of songs this morning about surrender, didn't we? Wonder why. <laughs> Psalm 115. And let's look at verse 1. Not unto us, O Lord, but unto you. But unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. The psalmist is saying, it's not unto us, but it's unto you, O Lord. See, that's where we have to put our, our focus. In. It's not just us, amen. See, most of the times we're focused on us. And listen, if you want to get rid of problems, if you want to live a, a blessed life, if you want to live a joyful life, then you have to put your focus on the Lord and not on yourself. See, sometimes when we focus on all our own problems, guess what happened? I don't know about you, but when I focused on me and me, it seemed like it didn't get any better. Come on. If you have a problem in your life, the more you focus on it, the bigger it becomes. Wait, 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 let's do that again. When you have a situation or problem in your life, the more you focus on it, the bigger it becomes, amen. And there goes your joy. See, truthfully, amen, when we begin to live a peaceful life and a real joyful life we're supposed to have is when we allow the influence of God to take over. When we allow God's influence to take over our lives, amen. You know, we call, I want to talk this morning about surrender, something very basic. We've been going back to basics, basics here, amen, the foundational things. And because sometimes we forget the foundations. And the greatest found, one of the great foundations is learning to surrender, amen, learning to surrender. You know, it comes to the place where what is really surrender. We're going to talk about that, of course. But it's like, of course, it's not my will, but your will be done, Lord. Absolutely. But do we know what that really means? It really means things like, not my plans, yours, but your plan. See, you know what surrender is? It's when you say, Lord, I got a plan, but I want to be sure it's your plan. So here it is, Lord, here's my plan. Now you take it and now give me your plan. If they match, great. If they don't, then it means my plan is not the one. Do you understand that, amen? So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about surrender. It's not just surrendering in church, you know, and going to your knees, amen. It's, it's surrendering my ways to his ways. The biggest thing is plans, though. We all make plans, don't we? And they're good. 
But when you make your plan, you've got to set it before the Lord and say, Lord, is this your will or is this just my will? Amen? Hallelujah. So let's talk about surrender. What does surrender mean and what does it look like? Go ahead and give me the uh, definition up there. Amen? We'll get there. I can give it to you, but I want you to see it. Okay? I surrender, Lord. Amen. <laughs> hey, all right, amen. <laughs> I was wondering, bro, I was going to have to practice surrender real quick. Amen. <laughs> surrender. Cease resistance. Cease to resist. I don't know about you, but uh, in my lifetime, amen, I used to resist the things of God. I wanted them, but I would resist them. How many know you can want things from God, or you can want God, but then you also resist them because you have something that's causing you to resist, and that is your ways. Amen. Surrender, to submit. Woo! That, that's the S word. Amen. I remember I was doing a, a wedding rehearsal one time, and the wedding rehearsal goes it's like this. So you know, that says, wives, submit to your husband. And all the ladies went, ooh, the S word. <laughs> Amen. But we're talking about surrendering. We're talking about submitting to God. Amen. How many know that if we submit to God, then it's easier for people to submit to us? Do you understand? Amen. So submit. Surrender means, it means dependence. This is a good word, dependence. Everybody say, well, I'm independent. You want to be independent? Then become dependent on God. See, I don't know about you, but a lot of times our own independence, what has it gotten us? But listen, the greatest independence is my dependence on God because I become dependent on God then I'm independent of my will. I'm independent of the desires of the world. I'm independent because I'm dependent on God. Surrender. Yield to the possessions to the possession or power of another. So the, so the surrender means I'm going to yield myself. Somebody else, Lord, you can possess me. I'm going to yield to somebody else's power. Amen. Okay. Surrender. <laughs> it also means to deliver up possessions to another. When I surrender, I deliver up. How many know surrender means I deliver something? You know, let's take it in the natural. In the natural, the surrender, we don't, in the, in the natural, surrender is not uh, a positive word, is it? In the military sense or any other sense, even whatever, surrender, I surrender. Wave the white flag. Amen. See, when you surrender, that means, when you surrender, that means you deliver something to somebody else. They take over. And in our thinking, amen, really, surrender is not a positive word because somebody else takes over my life. They I give it to somebody else. See, but with us, when we come to the point, listen, that we surrender to God, we say, God, here I am. Here's my plans. Here's my will. Here's everything I, I, I ever aspire, Lord, and I give it to you. Lord, because I know your plan is going to be better than my plan. Amen? To give away and to yield. Amen? To give away and to yield. So surrender means I'm going to give up something. I'm going to give up. Tell somebody say give up. Yeah. How many ever thought of surrender as being a good thing? In the natural, it's not, is it? It's not. Because we think of it as defeat. Guess what? And it is defeat. I have to suffer defeat. I have to be defeated in order so I can be victorious. What I'm talking about is defeating my fleshly will, defeating the, listen, defeating things, amen, that are of the world, amen, things that don't line up with what God wants, so I've got to suffer defeat. Think about this. It's a paradox in the kingdom of God. You have to be defeated in order to be victorious. It's a paradox. I've got to lose so I can win. Amen. I have to give up so I can so I can have. Amen. Do you understand that? Amen. And it's important. You know, it's most all of us. 
we're going to make one or we're going to make several choices. We're either going to let God's will be done or our will be done or somebody else's. Notice we're governed, amen, usually by our own will, what I want to do, or we're governed by the influence of somebody else, not God, or we're going to be governed by God's influence. Most people are governed by the first two, their own will and the influence of somebody else's will, amen? And if we're really going to be free and, and listen, be victorious, and we're going to have to be free of our own will and free of somebody else's will. I know I'm talking to somebody here today, or a lot of people here today, that you allow somebody else's will to control your life instead of God's will. You're allowing somebody else's opinions to control your life instead of God's opinion. Amen. See, we've got to get a hold of this. Listen, we've got to surrender to God's opinion, not to anybody else's opinion. Amen. That's why that, that scripture, Hebrews 10, 17, where God says, I will remember your sins and inequities no more. That's God's opinion. Man's opinion will be to remind you of who you've been. God's opinion is to tell you, I don't know who you've been. I know who you are and who you're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. That's why I say you've got to surrender to God's opinion. Surrender to his will. Amen. Because religion will give you a lot of other opinions too. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me now. We're talking about what surrender means and what it looks like. Turn to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We'll begin in verse 18. It says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Think about the wisdom of the world. Think about commercials you see on television. Who watched... The Super Bowl. I watched it. Did you see the wisdom of the world being displayed on each commercial? Oh, my God. Did you see the wisdom of the world being displayed at the halftime show? Did you see it? See, that's the wisdom of the world being displayed. Amen? Hallelujah. And the Bible's telling me here that, that God says he's bringing that to nothing. He's going to show us that the world's ways and the world's ideas are really the foolishness. But see, to the world, guess what? We look foolish. I don't know about you, but before I was a Christian, I thought Christians looked foolish. Amen. You, I mean, you've heard the story. Before. I used to go to the Bucks games when they first started. Amen. I wasn't a believer. I would get mad when the preacher gave them. They, they used to start with a prayer. The preacher would go to the middle of the field and pray, and I would get mad at that. <laughs> you know why? Because that was a conviction. I didn't want none of that. Amen. That to me was foolishness. What's that foolishness they're doing? Praying before a football game. Amen. And of course now the, the, they caught up with that old wisdom I had and they don't do it no more. <laughs> In fact, if you do it, people get up, not just upset like I did. People were real, I mean, uh, they bring lawsuits about it. Amen. Hallelujah. But see, when you talk about surrendering to God, it looks like foolishness to the world. What we do in here, if you're a non-believer, it looks stupid. It looks foolish. What are these people jumping around for? What are they praising God? What are they singing for? What is all this? Amen. What are they doing sitting there to hear somebody talk to them? Amen. And it's not even a motivational speaker, so to speak, you know. Tell you the seven steps how to be the greatest person you could ever be or something of that nature. Amen. See, it's just foolishness what we're doing today. And when you gave your money in the offering, that was real foolishness. And that's why they always say, the preachers, all they do is want your money. Isn't that right? And guess, guess what? It's not just non-believers. It's Christians. At least they call themselves Christians. They even think what we do is foolish. I mean, Christians think when we praise God, we, we even Christians name themselves Christians, think we're foolish when we praise God and how we do. 
amen, or when we answer altar calls, whatever it might be, amen. See, so we have to understand, amen, we've got to really get a hold of this. If we have to really surrender, give up our thinking and our ways, amen, and be into God's ways. It's like Mary said. What did Mary say when she got announced it? She says, be it, be it done unto me according to thy word, Lord. Amen. Let's, let's go on. Let's jump down to verse uh, 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, things which are not to bring to not things that are, that no flesh should glory in the presence of God. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption that according as it is written, he that glory in, let him glory in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, even in the church, we have to get a hold of this, amen? That it's not about, that in the church, it's not about us. It's about the Lord. But in heaven, it's all about us. Amen? Do you hear me? But see, that's when we're talking about a surrendering, amen? When you come into the building, amen, the building, you know, we're Christians everywhere, but when you come into the building, amen, it's supposed to be a place you come into and it's a place to remind you of surrender, amen. Remind you of why you're here, amen. You know, the church is, we're the church, not the building, but we meet in the building. And when we meet in the building, it's a place, amen, where we come to the point where you get an understanding of reverence for God, of get an understanding of we all come together for one purpose. And we're supposed to be together to surrender our wills to God's will, amen. Hallelujah. You know, what does surrender look like? Well, everybody knows the story of Paul, Damascus Road. He gets knocked down. He says, what do you want me to do, Lord? That's surrender. Everybody knows Isaiah. When God says, who will go for me? He says, here I am, Lord, send me. That's surrender, amen. Now go to Matthew chapter 26. Let's look at verse 39. Jesus in the garden. It says, He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, nevertheless, not as I will, but as I will. What does surrender look like? It looks like Jesus. What does surrender sound like? It sounds like Jesus. Think about that. Jesus was surrendered. He said, not my will, but thy be done. Amen. Nevertheless, Lord. See, we have to get to the place. Let's, Lord, I've got this plan. I've got this desire. Nevertheless, Lord, thy will be done. Not mine, but yours. Do you realize this? I want you to listen closely. That most of us, or all of us, would have really great marriages if we learn how to surrender to the Lord. Now, you're always going to have these little spats, but I'm talking about the real problems that arise in marriage. They arise in marriage because we're not surrendered to the Lord. We still want to do our will. We still want to do what we want to do. What we want to do overrides everything else. And if you get two people together that have strong wills and they want to override, they want to do what they want to do, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be fire in the house and not going to be Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> Amen. But if you get two people together, or even at least one, that can surrender to the Lord's will, then maybe the other one will fall along. Amen. Do you want to know what's foolishness to the world? When we talk about doing a family altar, that's foolishness. That's to the world, and maybe the people even in church, that's foolishness. But I'm going to tell you, if you surrender, and do those things, amen, that you know you should do, amen, with the Lord, you'll see that you'll have a happier life, a, a better family, and a better marriage, amen. Hallelujah. See, because the biggest problem, and I wasn't going to do a marriage sermon, by the way, but the biggest problem in marriage is two wills. Two different wills, not surrendered to God's will. That's where all the problems come from. I want to do this, and I want to do this. 
I believe this and I believe this. But see, we've got to come together and surrender our wills to God's will. And then as a fan, as a group, as a husband and wife, you can say, Lord, <laughs> I don't know about this, but not my will, Lord. The husband says, not my will, Lord. And the wife says, not my will, Lord. And then you come together and say, not our wills, Lord, but yours be done. And that will change things if you really learn to submit to what God says, submit to his word, submit to what he says. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to John chapter 4. I'm telling you, surrendering to the Lord and surrendering to God's will really is what, listen, will take us into what we want. We always talk about that blessed life, that victorious life. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 4, look at verse 34. Jesus said unto them, my work, or my meat, my work is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Jesus said this was what he was sent to do, to do what? The will of the one that sent him, the Father. Amen. Go to John chapter 5. Verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. This is Jesus. Jesus is the picture of surrender. He said, I can't do nothing for what I see my Father. I can't do nothing without the Father, he's saying. But yet, if we look at Jesus, we would say we're going to be like Jesus, we're going to be Christ-like, but yet we don't want to do the things Jesus did. Jesus surrendered to the will of the Father. Amen. Let's read that again. He says, the Son can do nothing of himself. Now, how many know you can do anything of yourself? But you make a decision. I make a decision. Say, you know what? It's got to be God's decision. It's got to be God's will. Amen. The son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. Look at... Uh, <clears throat> look at verse 30. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. This is Jesus. He says, I don't seek my own will, but the will of the Father that sent me. Now take that in perspective and put it into our lives. I don't seek my own will in a relationship. I seek the Father's. Amen. When I'm going to make a decision, amen, it's not my decision. It's going to be, Lord, what should I do in this situation? Amen. So, so we have to get this understanding of surrender. For us personally, it's not just surrendering to God in church, but it's surrendering our lives all the time, saying, God, what do you want me to do? Amen. See, it's hearing the Holy Spirit. How many know I believe we hear the Holy Spirit, but we reject the Holy Spirit Many times because it doesn't line up with what we want to do. Oh, come on. Come on. You ever, you ever have something in mind you wanted to do and the Holy Ghost is telling you no or the Holy Ghost is giving you another direction, but you still do it? What has usually been the outcome? What has been the outcome? We're not going to call from hands, amen, but there's some bad outcomes, amen. Come on. We've all done it, amen. I think one of the best examples I have is when Pastor Alice, we were living in Temple Terrace, and we were having a, uh, a uh, discussion, <laughs> a very intense fellowship, and uh <laughs> And Pastor Allison goes upstairs, and I'm downstairs fuming, right? So I go up the stairs, and I'm going up the stairs, and I can hear that voice saying, don't do it, shut up. <laughs> don't do it. And I get up on top of the stairs and go, da, 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 da. And then after I did that, I went down the stairs, and I felt like this. <laughs> and then I felt so bad, and I had to come and, and beg forgiveness and da, 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 da. And so what that showed me was listen to the voice of God, listen to the Holy Spirit, It'll save you some grief. Amen. <laughs> Come on, it's true. 
She don't even remember it. Amen. I remember, but I don't remember what it was about. It was stupid, I'm sure. You realize most things we argue about are really, when you come to the bottom line, are really kind of stupid. Amen. And very meaningless. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go to John chapter 6. And let's look at uh, verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I want to show you all those, and I know you've seen them before, but it's Jesus himself telling us, amen, he's our model of surrender. Jesus is our model of surrendering. He's our model of surrendering. I will say, you know, do you think Jesus didn't have a will? You think he was a robot for God? No, he had a will. That's why he said, not my will, but yours be done. I mean, know that we all have a will, amen? And you know, and sometimes uh, we get into this thing. Well, pastor, I, I know maybe I made a little mistake here or whatever, but, uh, you know, it wasn't that bad because I'm in God's permissible will. That's a religious bunk. There is no such thing as God's permissible will. God's made us with free will, but everything is our decision. See, God is not schizophrenic. He don't have two wills. Come on, I want to I kill some cows here. He don't have two wills. He's got one will for our life. But we got free will, and we take off and do our own will, and we say it's God's permissible will. No, it's not. It's what we want to do. He's only got one will for your life. Do you hear me? God don't have two wills for you. Can you imagine that? But you've heard that, haven't you? Well, we're in God's permissible. Well, no, you're not. God made you free will. But there's only one will he has for my life and your life. Come on. How many of you heard that before? Some people are telling the truth and some aren't raising their hand. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've been around church long enough, you've heard that before. You may have even heard it preached. I have, not by my, not by my pastor, amen, but I've heard it preached before. Well, God's permissible, no such thing, amen. He permits you to do whatever you want to do, but it's not his will. God lets me do whatever I want, but it's not his will. Think about it. Think about something you've done. Is it God's will? He permits you to do whatever you want because he don't, he, we're not robots, amen. We're not, he didn't make us as robots. He made us in his image. And his, See, God made us in his image. He said, let us make man in our image. The image of who? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And guess what? None of them are robots. We're made like God, so we have a will. Amen. So I just want to dispel that quickly. There's no such thing as a permissible will of God. It's like, well, I'll permit you to sin here, but that's all right here. I'll permit you to make that mistake. He doesn't have that, amen. He doesn't have, my will for you is to go ahead and make these mistakes, amen, but, this is, but I'd rather have you do this. No, God has only one will for you, amen. And it's our purpose, listen, to discover and seek out the will of God for our personal lives, amen? And guess how, you, how do you do that? God's will for your life is revealed in his word, and it's revealed as you hear his voice, amen. Do you hear me? Amen, hallelujah. Now let's go on. Go to, uh, 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 let's go to uh, Romans chapter 6. There's a song that was written many years ago, and it was by uh, uh, a rock musician that got saved, and the title of the song was, uh, You're Going to Have to Serve Somebody. Anybody remember his name? Uh, famous. I can't, it slips me right now. 
Bob Dylan. Everybody heard of Bob Dylan? He wrote a song, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to serve somebody. How many know Bob Dylan got saved? <laughs> Amen. And he wrote the song, you're going to have to serve somebody. And it's real simple. He says you're going to have to serve the devil, you're going to have to serve God. You're going to have to serve sin, or you're going to have to serve uh, holiness. Amen. And so we have to get a hold of this understanding, amen, that you're going to serve somebody. You're going to be a slave to somebody. You're going to be a servant, amen. See, if when I did my own will, guess what? I was a servant to the devil and to my own problems, amen. But then when I became a servant of the Lord, amen, I became a servant to righteousness and, and, fine, and holy living, amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, and let's begin in verse 16. Know you not? that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine or believing that was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. You're always going to be dependent. But the dependence on the things of the world really make you a servant and slave. You're always going to be a servant to something. Amen. You're either going to serve the world and serve the God, serve the, the, the flesh, or you're going to serve the Lord. Amen. There's no such thing, amen. Yep. You're always going to serve. Well, I don't, I don't serve nobody. Then you are serving. You're serving nobody. Amen. Think about it for a minute, amen. If you say you're serving nobody, then what are you really serving? You're serving your will, your flesh, amen. I'm not going to do anything. See, that's called rebellion. That's called disobedience, amen, in the world, amen. So get a hold of this, amen, that you're going to have to serve somebody. Anybody in here never serve anybody? Okay. So if you think you haven't, you're not, you don't understand. We all serve somebody. You're either going to serve the world system, what we call the flesh. You know what the flesh is? The flesh is your will. The flesh is your will, your desires. That's what the flesh is, amen, hallelujah. But if you surrender those to God, then it changes, then your, then your desires become what? They become God kind of desires, amen, hallelujah. So again, know you not that to whom you yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants you become, or you are, amen. Anybody ever serve somebody besides God? Who was that, I wonder? But here's the good news. Verse 17. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which is delivered to you. Being made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. Amen. The gospel, the good news, amen, is that we get to become dependent on God. Remember when uh, Paul said uh, he had this thorn in the flesh deal, remember? Amen. And he said, uh, I asked God three times to take it from me, but he hasn't. And God told him what? My grace is sufficient for thee. Because he's made perfect in God's grace. And you're made strong. When you're weak, that's when you're made strong. Why? Because you become dependent on God. Listen to me. When you become weak in whatever area of your life, that's when you have to, that's when you become strong because then you've got to turn to God and be dependent on God. Amen. Sometimes, amen, we should live that way every day, but we don't. Sometimes something has to hit us so we become weak, so we can say, I'm going to become strong now because I'm going to do what? I'm going to hear God. I'm going to hear what God has to say about this. Amen. And that's where he says that's where his weak, that's where his strength came from. He says, because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Why? Because I'm surrendered and dependent to God. Amen? Come on now. Amen? Some of us need to stop being so strong and try to get weak in the, in the natural and become strong in the spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. 
Go to Colossians chapter 2. Let's begin in verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. How did we receive Christ Jesus, the Lord? Think about it a minute. How did you receive the Lord? How did you receive the Lord? No, think, I'm not talking about, yeah, I know by faith, by grace through faith, amen. But think about how you did it. What was happening in your life at that moment that you received the Lord? How was your life? Usually when we receive the Lord, most of us, think about how, how was your life that, when you received the Lord? Most of us didn't do it, you know, from little children, amen. Some of us did, but most of us didn't. I want you to think about it. How was your life when you received the Lord? Most of us, it was in disarray. That's putting it mildly. Amen. It was a mess. Amen. So how did we receive the Lord? We surrendered. We said, Lord, I'm tired. I can't do it no more. Listen, I can't stand my life no more. That's how most of us did it. So he says, the same way you receive the Lord, walk your life out that way. I received the Lord saying, I can't, Lord. I can't anymore, Lord. So I'm going to live my life the same way. Lord, I can't. Myself, but with you, I can do anything. And that's how we do. That's how we walk out our life, amen. That's what it's saying, really. As we have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk you in him. Yes, we receive them by faith. Yes, we receive them through grace. But listen, it was desperation for most of us. Amen. For most of us, I'm not talking to anybody this morning. Amen. It was most of us it was desperation. Some of us it wasn't. Like Pastor Allison, it was it wasn't in desperation. She just received the Lord when she was a young girl. Amen. Most of us aren't like that. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But how many know later on in her life there were times of desperation, amen. Amen. That she had to walk this thing out, amen. Hallelujah. Most of desperation was with me. Amen. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I love you too. But uh, <laughs> she didn't know when she met me, Amen, trouble was coming in. <laughs> Amen. That was then, though. Amen. It's amazing the things that happen in life when you surrender to the Lord. Amen. Think about it. Amen. I remember when some people heard that I'd be coming a preacher and all that. They, they, they had to check this thing out. This is, this is foolishness. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember some people come to see me after I was 10 years in the ministry. Some come to see me and say, well, we've been waiting to see if you're going to fall. I said, man, that's, that's encouraging. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Zenon? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. i never forget somebody came to see me. Amen. They knew me from back then. Amen. In the church. Amen. They said, well, we're just watching to see if you're going to fall. 10 years in the ministry, they're waiting for me to fall. I said, wow. I thank God my life was surrendered to the Lord then. Because if it hadn't been surrendered to the Lord, who knows what I would have done. Probably turned the table over. Amen. See, that's what I'm talking about. If you don't surrender your will to God's will, amen, it would be hard to handle someone else's opinion. Amen. And when you can surrender your will to God's will, then you can handle, listen, anybody else's opinion. Amen. 
Do you hear me? Amen. Verse 7. Well, let's begin again. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. As you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Are you ready? And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and powers. Stop trying to add people to your life thinking they're going to make you complete. You are complete in Him. And if you get that revelation and surrender your will to God, then listen, anybody that comes into your life is going to be the same way. They're going to be complete in Him, and you're complete in Him. Now you've got a complete union. If not, you have an incomplete union. How did I get into marriage today? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm preaching a lot about it, but it's the truth. Amen. I think it's because a lot of the problems we have in life is because we're not surrendered to God's will. Amen. A lot of the problems you have in ministry is people not being surrendered to God's will. So you have disputes that should never happen. A lot of problems that happen in, 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 in business, anything else, because you have people that are what? There's definitely not God's will most of the time. So there's all, why do you have these problems? Why do you think we have the problems we have in the world? Woo! Why do you think we have the problems we have in America? Why? Because God is not here in our mind. He's been dismissed. Do you realize God has been dismissed from America? God, you're dismissed. Amen. And then we wonder why we have all the turmoil, all the trouble, and all the problems we have. Amen. Because we're not, as a nation, submitted to God's will. Amen. Now, a nation as a whole has never been submitted to God's will. We know that. Amen. But you have to have some leadership that might be submitted to God's will. Keep searching. Amen. But if you look at this completeness, you are complete in Him if you're willing to surrender your will to His will. Amen. When I can say, not my will, but your will be done, I now have become complete. Amen. I, I am now no longer schizophrenic. <clears throat> Trying to do my will, and trying to do God's will. And so what happens is I'm trying to do my will and I do God's will, so I wind up with this philosophy called the permissive will. You know what it is? We always find a way to uh, justify ourselves. Amen. From the winking God that winks at your sins, amen, to the permissible God, amen. Do you hear me? Amen. So... Look at somebody and tell them, you are, you are complete, complete in him. In him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise be to God. Ladies and gentlemen, surrender. Put that back up. Surrender. The day I got born again, I raised the white flag. But then what happened after I got born again, a little while right after I got born again, I put the flag away. Amen. And that's what happens to most of us. Amen. We put, we, we put up the flag of surrender, and then we go on a little bit with our lives, and we put the flag away. No longer are we surrendered. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, we need to always be living with a white flag as far as the Lord is concerned. I surrender to you, Lord. Amen. My victory is through Jesus 
and in Jesus, amen? But it's when I surrender, amen? Again, let's look at it. Surrender to cease resistance. Some of us need to stop resisting God's will for our life. We need to stop resisting what the Word tells us, amen? What God, don't, don't take your will and put God in on it. Do you hear me? I remember when I, probably heard the story before, I remember when I ran the faith home myself, every Sunday morning, I'd come up to the chapel, we had service in the chapel, I'd come up to be somebody waiting outside the door. Pastor, I'm leaving, I heard from God. God told me, I say, and I remember he's looking at me, I say, ain't the God I know, I just walk inside, Amen. See, God's a complete God. What happens to us when we can't do something, amen, is because we we can still resisting, amen, what God wants for us, amen. But I remember I used to, I remember I'd walk up, I'd see somebody standing there, I said, ah, oh, here we go. And it was always God said. Amen. Let me share this with you. If you come to me for counseling and you tell me God said, then you don't need to counsel with me. Uh-oh. Hear me again now. If you come, I need counseling, Pastor. Okay, what is it? Well, God said that I should, then you don't need counseling. You heard from the best counselor, God. I've been doing this 25 years. Listen, I might become cynical sometimes, amen. I probably do, amen. I tell Pastor Tony, I said, counseling is highly overrated. It's highly overrated because only people only do what they want to do most of the time. They rarely, they rarely do what you advise them to do. In fact, Pastor Tony, I don't know if, any, if anybody's ever done what I advise them to do. Sometimes I wonder if I even advise myself to do it. I don't know. But, but think about it for a minute. Amen. See, we're talking about doing God's will, surrendering, cease resistance, submit, the S word. Amen. I think somewhere in the Bible it says, uh, how are you going to obey God when you don't even, can't even, something like that, obey man or something, amen? Do you realize that? It's, you know, it's like, oh, I'll obey God. See, we, it's easy, you say you can obey God because you don't see him. Maybe you don't even really believe he's there, amen. So, yeah, amen, hallelujah. That's why it's more difficult to, Obey when you cut when uh, you know maybe a spiritual authority tells you something. It's harder to obey that many times. Amen. Hallelujah. Now in the world, the boss tells you to do something. You don't like it, you do it. Why? Because now you get fired. But when you hear God tell you something, you don't do it because you don't feel you're going to get fired. Amen. <laughs> Dependence. Let's finish it up and we'll conclude. Dependence. You have to submit yourself to be dependent on God. Be dependent on God's Word. Be dependent on the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, uh, I remember sometimes I, I'd be in a turmoil here in the ministry in the early days and the Holy Spirit would, would actually talk to me. Boy, I could hear that voice. And it would be something like this. When I was ready to quit, I was ready to quit. Pastor Allison remembers that. We were driving here to a board meeting, and I was telling her, and she says, well, if you're going to quit, just quit. I mean, I was, Phew. and so I got here, and I quit. And I walked, started walking, and I hear the Holy Spirit say, what are you doing? This is what you were called to do and what you always desired, and you're going to give up now? And the Holy Spirit spoke in supersonic tongues to me. <laughs> Quickly. And it was like, like this, Vernon. If they had told you it was going to be like this when you came here, when it was offered to you, would you still have taken it? Yes, amen. So it reminded me, amen, that Listen, that I knew I was called, and if they warned me about you're going to go through all these troubles, you would have said, doesn't make any difference. 
the Holy Spirit spoke to me quickly. I stopped, turned around, I said, all right. See, you got to hear the Spirit of God speaking to you. My flesh, my will, I ain't going to listen to this no more. Amen. I'm not putting up with this. Amen. And then the Holy Spirit said, you called here and you're going to give up? That was probably, it's 25 years now. That's probably 24 years ago. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and I share that with you because we have to be open to be submitted to God's will and what God wants, even though when we may think, maybe we think we've been offended. Maybe we think we're right. How many know that sometimes even if you think you're right, you've got to hear what God wants to say? Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. And uh, I believe I was right about some things. But it wasn't the way God wanted me to do it. And how do I know I was right about some things? Because if some of you heard the story, amen, we had a board meeting one time. Amen, it was a crazy board meeting, and this man that was on the board, he wanted to get rid of me and Ralph. You've heard the story probably some of you, amen. He came up there, and he was going to come with charges. The charges were this, that I was against married people. Now, you've got to remember, this is the early days of the ministry, Amen. And because there was a guy in the program that he wanted to be, have his wife, he wanted to be with his wife every weekend. We don't allow that. So he complained to this board member. Back then it was different. We had board members. That, so they go to the board member. They won't let me see my wife. This pastor here, he don't care about people that married him. I said, crazy stuff like that. Right? And that, uh, whatever, I don't know, some other st stupid stuff. And he gets up to read at the board meeting. Well, this, he starts shaking. This, 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 ah, he runs out the door. <laughs> this is a true story. This is real. Now, the truth of that, before we're in the board meeting, Ralph says, because you know me, I, back then especially, I was ready to, he says, Hank, Let's just keep quiet. He said, let the Lord handle it. I said, Ralph, you know, I can handle stuff. I said, all right. So I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting. This guy gets up. I'm going, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I see this, and I go, oh, my God. The Holy Spirit handled this thing. Now, if I would have taken matters into my own hand, guess what would have happened? We had a blowout. And nothing would have been resolved. It would have been problem. Probably the whole ministry would have blown up. But when you surrender and let, say, God's will, let God do it. I have to admit, back then, Ralph said, let God handle it. I was like, mm. I said, all right. Boy, and I saw God handle it. I mean, you had to be there. It was, it was powerful. Couldn't speak. Shook like this and threw the paper down and ran out the door. Never saw him again. I'm serious. I'm serious. It's and then the truth came out later from other members that said that his plan was that he wanted to take over the ministry. Well, in the wisdom of God, all that's been changed, amen, and so it doesn't work like that now. Amen. Why did I tell you that story? Because it's about submitting to God's will. Amen. Is sometimes we want to do it some way, but thank God sometimes uh, I listen to Ralph that day. He says, Hank, I said, they're going to get rid of both of us, I think. I said, how can they do that? Vote you out. Well, we, we took care of that. There ain't no voting anymore. <laughs> Besides, the board members now are Ralph and Diane, me and Allison, Apostle Louie, Pastor Tony, and my son, Wes. Ain't nobody being voted out anymore, amen? <laughs> amen. By the way, I don't really believe it's God's will for churches to be run, amen, by boards, amen? Most of the time they're bored anyway. 
Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm doing this, but but anyway. I'm doing my will right now. Amen. <laughs> I remember we'd have these board meetings, Pastor Tony, and, and we'd paint the, the dorms white or do something, amen, or whatever, and they get they said, no, we, we go back and paint them a different color. And I said, this isn't what a board's supposed to do. A board's supposed to set policy and be sure the policy is followed. Amen. And not supposed to worry about painting doors. Mary went to put up a fence. Oh, no, the fence should be a foot smaller instead of a foot bigger. I said, come on. We wasted time, amen. And I used to get upset and say, we're wasting time here. Let's go about things of God. Then one day we had a revival break out in the board meeting. Daniel, you were here then. You remember that? Daniel was there then. The board meeting was different. We had a, a, the office here, the board meeting. This was the warehouse. And we started having a revival in there. Pastor Tony or Cooper was in there. All of a sudden he started praying in tongues. We started hallelujah, and we had a revival at the board meeting. And then Sunday we came to church, and we had revival. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, I did my will there. I'm not going to tell you it was God's will for me to share that, but I wanted to share it. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to surrender, and you're going to serve somebody or something. And let's make up our minds <clears throat> to say, I want to surrender and serve the Lord. Amen? Proverbs 3, 5 says, <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding. Amen? Somebody say, trust in the Lord. First Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and He will exalt you in due time. Amen? See, humbling ourselves... Humbling yourself is the beginning of surrender. Amen? Hallelujah. So the same way you came to the Lord, surrendering is the way we've got to live every day of our lives. Every day of our lives we surrender our will to God's will. In other words, you don't have to ask God what shoes to put on. Amen? But decisions in your life, you've got to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, I want to do this, but what do you want me to do? Amen? How many know we're going to make mistakes? But don't go looking to make mistakes, amen? They're going to be there. But then the same way you came to the Lord is the same way you handle that. You say, I surrender, Lord. See, we have to begin to recognize our dependence on God. We have to declare it. In fact, you've got to be bold and say, declare it. You know what? I surrender to you, Lord. I'm dependent on God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet.